there's a, there's a category that I, I wanted to cover with you that I just touched on as we opened it up, that I think it's, there's a lot of different, confu there's confusion of, of semantics. And I want to clarify just a little bit on this because it's getting out there in the body of Christ and I notice the confusion that follows, all right? There is what God has given us, the, the spheres. Now they are spheres of influence. So we talk about the spheres over here but we talk about <coughs> of influence. But we also have domains. Domains, the very word, means authority. In Genesis chapter 1, we see the dominion mandate. Dominion means authority. God gave authority. And as one of our teachers put it so succinctly about a week ago, here he's speaking, and uh, he said, God gave man authority. Man through sin gave it to Satan. Jesus came and took it back from Satan and now gives it to us again. I thought, wow, that's good teaching. <laughs> he put it all in one sentence. And that's, that's really what happened. Jesus said, I have all authority. Why? He was given it. And so as we understand that, he recaptured for us, redeemed for us, not only our soul salvation, but our authority here on earth. But we have to take it. And like Joshua, you have to fight for it, but it's yours. And so... As we recognize this, the first one here is the individual. And David Hamilton has a tremendous teaching on this and how important the whole area is to understand the authority domains. We use the word domains versus spheres. Everybody say spheres. Spheres. Everybody say domains. domains. You know the difference? Yes. Okay. One is authority. That, that's what domain means. And uh, so we're getting mountains and all of the rest, and that's good. It's getting out there. But make sure this clarity comes. Two is the family. Now, the individual, this has to do with free will. You are made in the image of God. You can't even love unless you can also say no. So here's... Here's this area, and God has given us this understanding. The third is the church. And for us, that also, we think of missions. That's a part of the domain we are in. And the fourth is government. The government, though, can be, is to be upon his shoulders. The fifth are covenants that we make. Now that can be a business, corporation, it can be a football club, it can be all kinds of things. But remember that Laban and, jo and uh, Jacob made an altar and said, let God be our witness. And when you make a covenant under God, whether it's for your marriage or for something else, it is something that God oversees, watches over, and authorizes. Authority is given. And so, therefore, you have to keep your covenants. Now, over here, spheres of influence. Individuals have influence according to the sphere they enter. We had one man who gave a speech less than 20 minutes long, and when he gave his speech, Wall Street slowed down to a crawl, and they made no exchanges uh, for multitudes of people, billions of dollars, held up until he finished his speech. Who do you think that was? Huh? Greenspan. Greenspan? No. It was Tiger Woods. 
See, I don't even know who he is. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, here's a, here's a guy. How much authority does he have over, you know, <laughs> he's got a, almost a billion dollars in there. But how much authority does he have? Well, he has whatever money he has in his, his account. No more. The president could have been talking. The head of, you know, Secretary General of the United Nations. None of that would happen. Understand that the power that is here, it's not power, the influence that is here is so amazing that that's where you want to live as much as you can. And everybody thinks it's in here, that's where everything's going to happen. But over here, we also have the family. Now, all of these are in the Bible. These are in the Bible, but it's not as clear in terms of some areas. But this one is number one over here. Number two is the church or religion. And uh, number three is the area of, we're going to put it across, government. And number four then we go into the areas of, of uh, education. And number five, we go into the areas of media. There's no particular order here. There's no importance of it. Uh, David lines it up perfectly, and, and you get his teaching. But this is for you as leaders. And after that, we have uh, the area of the economy. In other words, you're going to line it up anyway. Now, the economy is not just business. If you don't have science and technology in front of this, you don't increase wealth. It's when you discover new things, you increase wealth. If I offer to sell you a handful of sand, how much would you give me for it? from the best beach in the world. But if I put it into a microchip, you see that creates wealth, not only for me as the first creator of it, if I did, but it creates wealth around the world. Then, so that's science and technology, plus production, sales, and service. So in these, you distribute the wealth, but this is where it's created with new inv uh, inventions. And wealth increase, increased three times over last century. So understand where it's created. And then why is it only created there and not somewhere else? Why are poor, poor nations not creating great creativity? There's a reason. Well, you go backwards and say, well, where's the Bible? Where's the, you know, where's the Word of God? Where's Jesus as Lord? And so on. You back up into these questions. Then the last one here is the area of celebration, which is in all, all seven of these are in every culture in the world. In maybe a very primitive form but they are there in every culture of the world. And that's arts, entertainment, and sports. So I tested this out in, like in, in Nigeria. I said, how many grew up in a, in a tribe and in a village where you had no electricity, no running water, no, none of the modern things like, like TVs and so on? Well, there were a few. Very few, but they, they were there. So then I walked through it. Okay, let's see if you had that. How did you publicly communicate? And they would say, well, with drums from one village to the next, and so on. And these are in every one, so you can work that through. Now here's the thing that I'm trying to close the gate and bring together so that there's understanding and not confusion, but I'd like to take it a step further. When, when you look at these, which is it that you use whenever you are discipling people? Church. 
do you use influence or do you use authority? Okay? It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Which does God usually anoint? The majority of the time, he's in, it's in the area of influence. So you look at the area of influence and you'll find that modeling, <coughs> Acts 1.1. 1, 1. Acts 1.1 1, 1 says what? You first do, then you teach. All right? Modeling is doing teaching. Now, look at all of the five-fold ministry gifts. There is a spiritual authority on them, but there are not necessarily people of what man would recognize as authority. So, apostolic, prophetic, the world will scoff at it, but we listen. Because there's an anointing on those pastoral, teaching, evangelists. And as you, as you begin to think about those, as you use influence, that's where the Holy Spirit comes and brings alive. And it's not by might or power over here, but it's by my spirit. There are things that he anoints over here. For example, a parent over a small child. You say, no, don't do that. Don't cross that street. And they start to, and you use the authority and grab the hand of the child, keeping them, because they really don't know what they're doing. But when you ha start to do that with a 15-year-old or a 17-year-old, as they're individuating, you find suddenly they have authority too. And you have to adjust your authority and begin to use more influence, and that's what you have to do when you're discipling in YWAM your next generation. So to discipling the next generation, many times I watch people try to use this to disciple young, uh, young leaders that are already beyond a certain stage and you watch them as they come and then they go. They don't stay on that base, they vote with their feet. But when you begin to learn how to disciple by influence, but they'll make a mistake, right. That's the price you pay. But gratefully, you never made a mistake. <laughs> come on, let them have a mistake or two. <laughs> Just try not to make it a big one. <laughs> That's how you, you work this thing. Now, in this area of using influence, the more influence you use, the more authority you're given. Because authority is given from the grassroots up. Recognition from the top down, we say top. But we need to understand this clearly because we're going in and trying to cooperate with each other at major levels right now, as you've been talking about collaboration over Haiti and, and uh, Nigeria and so on, uh, and Chile, but it's going to be a template to understand with greater refinement, when do you use authority, when do you use influence? And the more authority you use in your leadership, the as less influence you will end up with. But Obama right now is using both authority and influence in a tremendous way over one particular policy. It's a dangerous thing he's doing. Dangerous not just for him, but for the nation. It can divide the nation on the way he's going. And I look back to a, a, a Reagan, and Reagan you know, says, Gorbachev, Tear down this wall, you know. And he was only speaking in influence because that's why he went to the wall to say it. He was using influence and he was, of course there was authority backing him up, a lot of big guns and <laughs> atomic warfare and all. But uh, that, he wasn't wanting to use that and he wouldn't, he didn't. But he used influence. And that's what Kennedy did, said, even in his opening statement. Ask not what the nation can do for you, but ask what you can do for the nation. 
and his influence was growing. I mean, it, just for a year and a half, he became an icon. But he would, he didn't, uh, you know, he didn't waste his his influence. He built his influence, and so this is what, as leaders, learn to to not waste. Darlene calls it influence vouchers. Don't spend all your vouchers. After they're gone, they're gone. And you stand there all alone saying, well, I won. No, you're all alone. You, you see what I'm saying? So in the process of discipleship, what do you do with transition? And so this is a big word, transition. What that means is the old guy gets out and the new guy comes in, right? Uh, I, I think as we look at the Word of God, it's a different kind of story. And so being as old as I am, I really am going to start teaching this. <laughs> I'm going to really ring this bell. No, you know, it's great to say, oh boy, I'm going to get out and I, <laughs> I'll get to play golf all day. and I'll. Most people die within a couple of years after they, they retire. But uh, think about this. What do we lose when suddenly we are transitioning? I think instead of transitioning, what the Lord has shown us here, we are to enlarge our leadership. Now, the enlargement of leadership doesn't mean you step out, you, you, you give more room, you step aside. You give more space. And so this is what we call it here, is enlargement of leadership. So once we did this, uh, with Darlene and I as base leaders, we set up a team three, which is two of them are here. Uh, David Hamilton, he's of uh, one of these generations. I'm not <laughs> going to tell you which one. But uh, one of them is in his 50s, one's in his 30s, the other's in his 20s. I don't know which one David's in, but uh, he's in one of those three. <laughs> the 20s, all right. And uh, we're discipling him on, on integrity. So, <laughs> all right. Yes, still learning. I can see that. But uh, as, as we're doing this, we're, we're thinking regarding not only of the future and, and letting the younger take this the place but there are certain things right now that I'm dealing with and if you don't don't recognize it's happening but uh, you know there's there's a little bit of a weight on me I have to come up with two million dollars by next Friday but uh, you know, and, and so far I don't have it so uh, we'll, we'll tell you the, how the Lord did it uh, or, or I don't know where I'll be I'll, I'll take off and stay I'm we're going to Mongolia I may stay out there but anyway <laughs> Uh, how do we handle this in transition? Well, you don't transition, you enlarge. And so one of the things that has come up, we're, we're making the Ghost Center uh, Auditorium, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be soundproofed. Now that's so all the neighbors who are so noisy won't distract us. <laughs> or <laughs> that we won't distract them. Anyway, we're doing that. And uh, so th that's why we're not over there right now instead of here. But as, as you understand what, what we have to do to do that, it's, it's, a, you know, it's almost a $100,000 deal. Well, what I suggested through the leadership and all is let some of these young guys raise 5000 10000 each and so on because they'll never be a leader unless they can handle money. It just doesn't, you don't, you don't just say, oh, now you're a leader, okay, now take over the money. It doesn't work that way. You enlarge it and you begin to let them take it as, as, as they grow into it. Now, we're not there yet because I got to see some two, two big events take place this year financially, but I want to begin to see them grow so that they can handle millions if they're going to run something that takes millions. Amen. So this is where uh, you have to move in influence over here because we're a mission, we're a charity, we're a nonprofit. 
And you just can't go up and say, I want you to give a million dollars, sir. You know, Try that by authority. You can't. They have the domain. That's their money. You can't even covet it. Uh-oh, just, we just got some conviction. Anyway, what you do is ask the Lord where you go, and then you try to influence that. And, and if God anoints it, he will give you favor, and favor means they receive whatever your influence is, and, and you present it. Now, if you try that too many times, you're, you're going to also lose your influence with the same guy over and over and over. So there's, there's something here that you have to understand in terms of their capacity, where they are in relationship, and all kinds of things that are involved in that very beautiful partnership when it's right. But it's all in this area. Don't think you've got authority there. Because this is the big issues. When you take, for example, the area of family, and okay, now I'm over, I'm over YWAM, you're under me, and you happen to be a family, I want you to do so and so. No, no, that's a, called a cult. You just took authority over what God gives authority. You see, it's Jesus up here over all of this. It's not government over this. It's not government over that. It's not government over the other. They each have their roles in relationship to one another, but it's Jesus is Lord over all of these areas. Amen. So it's Jesus over government. And if you want his smile and his glory, as John was talking about, so he's able to cause his face to shine upon government, do what Jesus will, will bless. Don't ask him to bless what you do. And the same as church or, 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 or family or even in, down to the individual. So these are authorities God has given. And they are the powers that be are ordained of God. And they bear not the gun in vain <laughs> to modernize it. So as we, we understand these more and more, you'll be more effective in your leadership. And uh, after a while, you'll say, wow, some of those old missions did understand a few things that I didn't know. I thought they were just dead and dry and, you know, and too old to <laughs> continue. But it's not that way. We just have to grow in our understanding. And when you understand between these two, it's very important. Another one is gender. Whenever God gives authority, You're a nurse, darling. Give us the difference. <laughs> the rest of you, just ask your mother. All right. My time is, is up here, but I, I want to show you something. We have a teaching and an understanding that God can give in our mission authority, whether you're man or woman. Now, but let me say that at the same time, when you, as a woman, start to use this authority, don't blame it on gender if something should have been over here. Because once you do that, you're, you're starting to hurt the very influence that you have out of your authority. Because you do have influence in every one of these categories because you've been recognized with authority. Now, does that mean you don't, uh, you don't teach on that area? Not at all. You teach on it. But don't try to manipulate with it or you end up, uh, and that's what I see, the lady with the head of, head of now that started out, she came from Australia, of course, what can, uh, anyway, <laughs> she did. Anyway, but she immediately tried to use an authority and you watched everybody say, oh, this feminism is so... What they were against was not so much women in those roles, but she had been embittered by the very transport issues and all the things that had taken place in Australia, brought it over to America, and there, I saw that immediately, immediate jolt, and it really hurt the cause of women 
in ministries and so on because then men picked it up and said, ah, it's not worth it type thing. But it is worth it. We have to understand equality and we must teach. And in the teaching, you're, you're now influencing in a lasting way. So bringing this down to what we've been dealing with, as I've, I've tried to maybe raise the flag over and over through influence here about teaching all of those right now in camps, you want to increase your spiritual authority and even they will impute to you other authority, but be careful when you do so that you don't end up in the wrong domain where God didn't call you in the first place. Because they, your, your influence is going to grow like mad. And as it grows, and you're going to teach, if, if you teach and model and teach, like uh, I, I loved what they said to Mitch, I, we knew you would come, <laughs> you know. There was, a, there was an influence that they were doing, and as a result, their influence is just growing out the roof. But if, if you bring in, convene, and converge all of these others that we have connections with, they're going to see something through you, not that, well, they give themselves and look, he fell over with a heart attack. But they're going to see that you're, you can bring in help better than even their government. Because their government has to look to the United Nations or to one of the big countries, and the big countries give, oh, we gave $5 million. Uh, that's nothing for a country of big size. But when you see Christians doing something, you can see something much better. You got the picture? Yeah. So add this, that you are increasing your authority, uh, your, your influence most, by a spiritual authority that then people will say, well, why don't you be mayor? Why don't you do this? Why? Because they're looking to an idol called government for all their food, drink, clothing, shelter, health care, and all those things that government doesn't have that mandate. Government should be overseeing protection of their people, and there is an, in a crisis, that's part of it, but from the invasion of the nearby country, like Argentina <laughs> into Chile, and, uh, <laughs> oh, sorry about that, and uh, <clears throat> he grew up there. And, and uh, that, that's part of their role. They bear not the gun in vain. But they aren't to take and be responsible for your whole life. When government takes over from the family, the food and all the rest, you've got a problem. You have a dictatorial government, a totalitarian government growing. And as it takes over your whatever it is, all your areas, <laughs> healthcare, I want to say. But if you, you start taking over that, you can't get it back because entitlements, people, okay, now I'm going to depend on the government. Well, everything you do, then that gives a little more chunk. I said to a group of uh, businessmen in Sweden one time, as one of them said, you know, in my company and in my person, out of what I give, I give 91% of all of my earnings to the government. I said to them, this is back when the Soviet Union was still working, I said, you know, the Soviets have more personal uh, uh, re authority and freedom than you do. You have a few people right at the top making all of your decisions, 91% of everything that money is used in, they make the decisions for you. He says, you're right. That's what he was feeling. That's why the head of IKEA moved to Epelange in Switzerland just to get out of Sweden. And that's why Saab left, and that's why Ericsson and others are leaving. So these are the kinds of things that happen. People vote with their feet. Now apply that to your base. Apply that to Haiti and Chile and Nigeria. And understand, we can use this, and nobody will hate you for that except the enemy-inspired people. Everyone, and they, you know, the enemy will see this, but even those people show love, and even the enemy will have to give up on them as well. God bless you, and I hope you'll really start thinking about these, the differences. Use this every time you can, and this as little as you have to, and there is a time you have to use this.